Hi there, it's a pleasure to have you join us for another informative weekend edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Inside the pages today, HealthWise focuses your attention on the budgeted spend for healthcare. We're also celebrating our farmers and exploring the factors of productivity. Stick and stay for the vital information that will flow from these and other features you don't want to miss. It all unfolds right after this important message. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level, and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. Thanks again for being here. Moving along this half hour journey inside Jamaica Magazine, we now turn the pages to our HealthWise segment, looking at how government plans to invest in the improvement of public health for this new fiscal year. We are on a mission, as I've said before, to reform delivering equitable, comprehensive, and quality health care for the people of Jamaica. The government's mission of guaranteeing adequate, effective, and efficient public health service in the new fiscal year comes with a price tag of over $125 billion. $118 billion is allocated for recurrent expenses, inclusive of budgetary support to the Bellevue Hospital and government chemist. The ministry will offset that with $530 million earned from fees collected and government and its international partners will also spend $6.42 billion on major health projects. A large portion of the money will ensure the 23 hospitals, 336 health centers, and specialized institutions in the four regional health authority areas are equipped to deliver first-rate service to Jamaicans. This includes operational support for the National Public Health Lab, the Blood Transfusion Services, and Immunology Unit, as well as health standards and regulations, procurement of pharmaceutical and medical supplies, and regional health system support. Another $10 billion is to cover approximately 68% of the operating cost of the University Hospital of the West Indies, and just over $9 billion is for the overall administrative services and regulatory expenses of the ministry. In the new fiscal year, Five health improvement projects will be jointly funded by the government and its bilateral and multilateral partners at a combined cost of $6.4 billion. Interventions will continue to reduce AIDS-related illnesses and deaths, prevent new HIV infections, and provide testing, treatment, and counseling for infected persons. Progress is being made on the construction of the Western Children Adolescent Hospital and redevelopment of the Cornwall Regional Hospital. We're on the fifth floor of it and it is going well, and the technical audits that are taking place parallel to construction suggest that quality is being assured. We are building a brand new hospital. The only thing that has not changed is the original concrete structure, and even that has been reinforced in a significant way. Roofing, uh, reinforcement of the beams, the columns. So all the other, the bulk of the expenditure is going into producing a, a new hospital. The partitions, the equipment, the, 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 all the, the things for a modern hospital. As for the four-year project to modernize the University Hospital of the West Indies, this year the ring road will be rerouted and a new car park constructed. Designs will also be commissioned for the upgrading of the electrical grid, portable water supply, sewage network, and IT infrastructure. The fifth capital development project is for the prevention and care management of non-communicable diseases, NCDs. It really has its foundation in the approach to treating with lifestyle-related disease, NCDs, which as you know has been a 70% cause of deaths of Jamaicans, a big cause of death globally and something that we have to do in terms of adjusting to track lifestyle and behavior to see where people are vulnerable and to treat with those 
um, persons. As part of this project, designs are to be completed for the construction or renovation of 12 facilities during the fiscal year. It will also involve starting construction at the Spanish Town Hospital, finalizing corrective and preventative maintenance work at the Maypen Hospital, commencing the procurement of civil works for three health centers, and getting started on sewage studies for 10 health facilities. The 2023-24 targets also include application of the Jamaica Moves app nationally and continued implementation of the electronic health record system. The electronic health records are EHR, and we'll refer a lot to it now as EHR for short, is in fact the wave of the future in healthcare delivery. And for Jamaica, we are proud to be the only country in the Caribbean that is moving ahead with this. It is potentially changing the way we administer patient care. And in, in, a, in a very short phrase, it improves by reducing transaction time, transaction cost, and improve the quality of service provision for the patient in our public health institution. These are just some of the ways in which the Ministry of Health and Wellness will be investing in the well-being of Jamaicans for 2023-24. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. On this next leg of the Jamaica Magazine journey, we are exploring how to achieve productivity increase by examining the factors that impact its growth. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security through the Jamaica Productivity Center, JPC, has been developing and implementing programs as well as conducting workshops to assist individuals, companies and firms optimize their efficiency and drive productivity improvement in Jamaica. The JPC recently hosted a virtual session that brought accomplished individuals and high achievers in one setting to share needed information on how productivity can be achieved and its impact on society. Productivity in simple terms is how efficient an input is converted to output. When this happens, economic growth and the country's development is fueled because of the increased goods and services produced with greater efficiency. Businesses will realize higher profit as they produce more outputs from lower input due to the systems they implement. Their competitiveness will improve and they will be able to better compensate employees. Citizens will realize improvements in their standard of living and will be able to exercise higher levels of consumption of goods and services even with reduced working hours. Higher economic growth measured by increased gross domestic product GDP output resulting from an increase in productivity will also benefit the country. How? Through the generation of larger tax revenue for government. This allows for greater investments in infrastructure and services, including education, healthcare, welfare, transportation, roads, water, and more. Gross domestic product GDP is the sum of labor productivity, capital intensity growth, and total factor productivity. Therefore, increases in all three areas equate to us having a booming economy. JPC has found that there are several factors that hamper productivity that need to be treated with urgency. They include bureaucracy, low value-added production, crime, traffic congestion, lack of suitable technology and capital investment, as well as job and skill mismatch and limiting international trade flows. As it relates to labor productivity, the JPC recommends that companies and firms, public or private, small or large, research what is happening in their industry and make innovative changes on a consistent basis. Where enterprises are shifting from being more labor-intensive to technology, such as artificial intelligence, they must seek to create the right balance between human effort and technology to optimize productivity. 
integrating the right technology and a smart business process that is measurable, result-based and time-based is now an essential part of the solution for firms to optimize productivity. This includes establishing customer service platforms and payment gateways that are responsive. Every worker needs to know what is required of them, with the worker and supervisor using verifiable established targets. You cannot improve if you're not measuring. You won't know what to, to, to do. And we'll just be all based on, on a gut, gut feeling. And um, so that's one of the things we want to encourage us, even as individuals, organizations, to, to have that um, culture or habit of measuring and measuring what matters. Right, and not just measuring everything, but measuring what matters and working to improve on those gaps that exist. The Labour and Social Security Ministry through the Jamaica Productivity Centre has started its very own modernization exercise through the institution of a digital records management system, moving a number of its services online as it upgrades its network and investing in new technologies to improve efficiency. Investing in research and development and facilitating the creative, scientific and technological expertise of Jamaicans will spur innovation and the creation of new products and services to transform industries to meet the demands of the fourth industrial revolution. For example, we have agriculture. Agriculture could be transformed to an high-level agricultural sector. And I'm thinking also with that, there can also be greater linkages between the goods producing and service producing sector. Enhancing productivity, quality and competitiveness through world-class individuals will require a culture of continuous training. We have to learn how to accept or create structures that allow innovation, allow change, to build a culture of continuous learning and improvement. Let us start with access to broadband. Broadband can give us that quantum leap forward in Jamaica tied with a digital literacy program for people of all ages, tied with schools that focus on continuous learning and continuous improvement. We need higher education and more focused training programs, upskilling the global services industry. So that's basically like the BPO. There's the possibility for individuals to use the internet and free education available online to advance productivity and for maximizing on remote working in this increasingly digital world. Working on your own individual digital literacy, being familiar with the tools that are out there, not just for consumption, but what the possibilities are. And there's so many resources online that you can find to do that. Coursera, Udemy, um, it, and these are their platforms in their own right. Um, another one too that's really good because I find that the things on Coursera and Udemy tend to maybe work best if you know you've already completed high school and university if you need to bring your math skills up to date you can use an assort a resource like khan academy increased education and training certification quality management and leadership rewards and incentives innovation having the right technology automation and tools, and using those to full capacity are all key tenets of long-term productivity. Of course, all this doesn't necessarily mean working harder. Instead, it's all about working smarter. Hi Jamaica, this is Pernell Charles Jr., your Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries. April is recognized as Farmers Month, and that's the time for us to celebrate our noble, hardworking, and resilient farmers and fishers. Our food heroes have led Jamaica through some of the most difficult times. Whether it is pandemic, global conflict, or climate change, you have continued to persist and exceed expectations. So we want to thank you for seven consecutive quarters of growth in the agricultural sector. And I assure you that the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries will continue to give the necessary support so that you can continue to be the food heroes that you are. Farming is viable and food security is everybody's business. So, as we celebrate Farmers Month, we want to urge all Jamaicans to get on board and grow smart and eat smart. One love.
April is being celebrated as Farmers Month, and so are we here at the GIS. So let's head into the field and meet a female grower whose gardening hobby blossomed into a lucrative farming business. I got into farming because my hobby was gardening as nuts about plants, flowers. So it was kind of a natural area to look for when I was looking for something to do. I started in an area that didn't have water, so I was not able to irrigate. And with climate change, um, it made things really, really unpredictable, very risky, and uh, just difficult. So things never, I don't consider myself as having really started farming until I moved into this agropark, where I was able to irrigate and do things in an optimal way. Amity All is approximately 2,400 acres. We have 22 investors, five of which are female. The soil is predominantly Sydney clay, and the crops that do well here, we have the cooker bits, that would include pumpkins, sweet potatoes, zucchini, squash. Also, a few tubers do very well, uh, sweet potatoes and cassava. Those crops do very well. We also have a lot of farmers who have gone into the scotch bonnet pepper, and they're also doing very well. Once we manage the water application with the type of soil that we have and I give proper nutrition, these crops do very well. Life has been a learning experience primarily because of the Sydenham clay, but I don't know if that's particular to this park. I think anywhere that you go, you have to learn to work with what you have. So it's been a learning experience and um, but one good thing about it is that you see the rewards at the end of the day because you're able to irrigate or fertigate, which is fertilizing through the irrigation system. So you're getting closer. I see myself inching closer and closer to the point where I will get optimal yields, which is what every farmer wants. Everything that I, I produce goes to food processors. And the particular processor that I sell to, 90% of their output is exported. So I like to think that I'm a part of that whole chain that is earning foreign exchange for the country. I plant only hot peppers. I'm trying this year to try and stretch myself and learn other things. So I'm hoping on the boundaries, I've created little areas where I'm going to do some experimentation. But for now, I'm only doing hot peppers and specifically scotch bonnet. I've set myself the, the challenge of trying to master that because of the two types that we grow here in Jamaica, that definitely is the most demanding one. So still going up the learning curve. Um, I think the reason why I settled on peppers is because you can sell it. You don't have to scratch your head and wonder where you, you're going to sell it. Because most of the, the processors have back orders, export orders. And in fact, um, we've found ourselves in the situation in Jamaica where processors have to import um, pepper mash. So you will never ever have a problem selling your product. If, you're, if you never went to farm school, if you don't really have experience, try to get into a situation where people are readily accessible to give you that encouragement, not just advice, technical advice, but also encouragement. Because sometimes you may go through a little period where you feel, wow, is this really worth it? and that support is valuable. Um, but that's one thing, in terms of practical advice, don't go anywhere without water. Just don't go anywhere without water. That's the mistake I made. And the second thing is try to farm reasonably close to where you live. Another mistake that I made because you're being, how often you go to your farm, the hours you put in, it shows. The further away you live, you try and cut corners here and cut corners there, and it will show. When you come to Amitel, there are a few things. There are things here that can help to foster your production. 
One, we have a team of stakeholders working together to cater to your needs. We have the RAD extension officers, we have the persons from NIC, we have the team from AIC. We also have a group of farmers that are willing to work together to help to move the produce not from the ground to the plate. As we draw near the close of today's magazine, we recognize that the state of our natural environment has much to do with how successful our women and men can grow the food we eat. For those of us who are not farming, we can still support Jamaica's food security by taking care of the natural spaces that feed the agriculture sector. Spaces like our wetlands. Travel with us now through Jamaica's largest wetland area and learn how to protect and preserve the ecological life of these kinds of areas. The Black River Morass is actually the largest wetland area in Jamaica. Um, the Upper Morass was uh, used for planting rice some years ago. That has ceased and uh, um, as a result, um, you know, we have lost that area. But the Lower Morass is still here and it provides not just a safari boat tour, but shrimping, fishing, and uh, there's a lot of bird life still in the lower morass. It has been declared a wetland of international importance, a Ramsar site. The Black River Morass is home to hundreds of crocodiles, vegetation, and other aquatic animals. Through guided tours offered along the river, you can glide upstream to learn more about the wetlands and all its inhabitants. Welcome on board the Safari Diva, and welcome to the Black River Safari. My name is Roger, and I'll be your captain and also your tour guide. Our trip will take us approximately four kilometers upstream during which I'll show you some birds, uh, wetland vegetation, and some of our very friendly crocodiles. Presently, we're on the Black River, and this is Jamaica's longest navigable river. It is 44 miles long, about 70 kilometer. Well, surrounding us, we have over 21,000 acres of swamp and this is the largest wetlands in the Caribbean. It is also home for over 65 different species of birds. 17 years ago, it was estimated there was a little bit over 100 crocodiles living within the area. And since then, their number have increased as they are on the endangered species list. They were once hunted for their skin to make a nice shoes or a good handbag. But they are protected, no hunting of crocodiles in Jamaica. Well, they are part of our heritage. You're on our coat of arm with the crocodiles at the top, Indians at the side. Unlike what we may believe in Jamaica, our crocodile here, Crocodilus acutus, is one of the most docile of the crocodilian species. The thing about it is that they help to cull the fish population the animals, the fish that are diseased or the fish that are dead, they will eat them and so on. So that it's well worth having those crocodiles here within our wetland areas. These birds you are looking at, they are called egret, uh, commonly known as galling. The reason for the birds to nest in this location Behind us, this is our local fish market. So once those small boat comes from sea, they'll have some food to get. In the river, we can catch big fish like tarpon. Those can get up to 200 pounds. And uh, snook, which is a very good eating fish, can get up to 50 pounds. And the African perch, mullet, snapper, several different types. It's very good for fishing. 
So by the shallow edge of the river, it is also the main habitat for our freshwater shrimp. This little device I have here, this is called a shrimp trap. It is made from the bamboo plant. We'll use for bait roasted coconut, oranges, or even a piece of chicken. Now once the shrimp goes in, it's difficult for them to go out. The conical shape helps to keep them in. So we'll just hold it and twist it. It opens up so we can shake them out. It's actually very simple, but it is effective. The design came from West Africa over 200 years ago, and it is still used today. The vegetation or trees, they are called mangrove, which we have two types of mangrove tree, white and red. White mangrove, small leaves, and they are brighter in color. Red mangrove have much bigger leaves and also have those aerial root that goes into the water. It takes up all the minerals and nutrients for the tree. This section of the river we're entering, we call here Mangrove Avenue, as it forms a canopy similar to our bamboo avenue. These are all red mangrove trees, the ones that have the roots going into the water. In the early 1900, the bark or skin of red mangrove was used for making a type of dye which we call tannin. Did you know that the water in the Black River is actually clear? The river got its name due to the dark shade created by the presence of peat soil on the riverbed. The peat soil, which is at the bed of the river that is giving off the dark reflection, uh, it also has its advantage and its disadvantage. The advantage, whenever time we have heavy rainfall or during hurricane, the soil it acts as a sponge which absorbs the excess water, so we have no flooding activity within the area. However, when the water level gets too low, the peat soil it gives off the methane gas and with the help of sunlight, it will ignite. There are many different types of wetlands. In Jamaica, the most common wetlands are coastal mangroves, morasses, lakes, and ponds. For more information on the Black River Morass and all the other wetland areas in Jamaica, visit the National Environment and Planning Agency's website at www.nepa.gov.jm Vehicle operators must always use safety devices. Helmets and seat belts are there to make sure you arrive alive, protecting you against injuries and even death. Since the start of the year, far too many road users have died. Some of these could have been prevented if the victims wore helmets or seatbelts. The new Road Traffic Act will fine persons for not wearing their seatbelt or helmet. So, do yourself a favor. Wear your helmet, use your seatbelt, save money, and stay alive. And this is where we end the program, but only for today. Be sure to join us again tomorrow for another show. Until then, there is more to watch by visiting our website, jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Walk good, live good, and see you next time. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.